Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. Alrighty, one of the things I wanted to talk about today, first of all, which I think is kind of important, if it seems kind of disjointed as, as a matter of uh, what we're going to do tonight versus what we did last video, what, you know, and it seems like it doesn't all lace together and line up properly. It's called life, and it's, it's my life. This is what I do in my life. This is, this is one of the probably most real reality shows you're ever going to find. Really what I have to do is what I have to do tonight for a buddy of mine. <clears throat> As the other projects that we need to catch up on, that's life. We'll be catching up on them. I also want to add that Sunday, last Sunday, it is now Friday today, I think. Sunday we went for a ride in the mountains. Um, there was snow all over the ground and it was really nice. I think there was snow above 5,000 feet. There was snow and we went up. Yeah, a little above 6,000 feet. And we didn't have any active snow. But there was snow on the ground, and it was real pretty, and it was fun. And it wasn't too cold. So that was neat. All right, what I need to do tonight is I have, I have this hub here. And this is a late model hub. This is the same thing as I put on my shovel head. It's like a 2,000 up front hub for a dresser and my buddy Rich, my good buddy Rich, who sent me a generator when I was putting Elsie together and has helped me out of I don't know how many jams over the years, many kinds of jams over the years. Anyway, uh, he wanted me to lace him a 19 inch wheel and so I dug up one of these hubs and I'm going to put bearings in it, so I thought, you know, I don't know that I've ever shown how to put bearings in one of these things, how to remove and replace the modern bearings that these have in them. So I had to take one out to make sure my tools are working and that I remember how to use them. So what I'll do is instead of motor mouthing here anymore, I think I'll get on with this and uh, do it. Well, this part has to go in, and, you know, I had an employee who was kind of rough on some of my tools. I like to put grease on tools like this. They have a tendency to last a lot longer if you're kind to them. And they ain't cheap. Which brings up another thing I wanted to mention. I'm always preaching in the, in the uh, comment section. I tell people, I say, well, if you uh, look in your service manual, and I'm sure a lot of people that's, think that's quite an assumption on my part to think that they have a service manual. If you can afford to own a Harley, you can afford a service manual. Yes, they're expensive. We knew that going in. It's kind of the way it is. But that way, when you ask a question, I can refer to something and we have something to compare notes with and, and speak to each other on. So anyway, I'm going to move that tool like that. Hey, you. This should go right in there. And I have no idea why it's not. And then it was in there. Now, I've already taken the one out of the other side. With taking the first one out, you have to be real careful because, because it's where the spacer and the bearing come together <clears throat> that that tool is going in the hole of the bearing and then right into the space where that is. 
And once that tool catches in there, <laughs> then everything's wonderful. So now we're getting that, we're doing the second bearing. And uh, I'm going to have to uh, get an Allen wrench into that spreader bolt. And it will drop right into the hole like that. And it did. Okay, now the next thing I need, let's see. We're going to have to put this piece on here. There are names for all these pieces, and the tool certainly came with, with excellent instructions. But I'm going to do this anyway. And if you just watch it, you can see it all kind of do what it's supposed to do. But we know that that, that part is in there. <clears throat> and let's see, what do we need to do now? I think... We'll just get that right lined up there. You see these little feet here, they need to go on the flange there so they have something to pull against. And let's see, we need to put a, put a uh, tool or a nut and a washer here. And we'll put that right there. Now normally you're doing this on a wheel that, that you have a whole wheel. And instead we have me doing this on a bare hub. And uh, it's going to work just fine. Once we get it uh, there we go. Once we get it get the bearings out, why then we can put the new ones in. So we'll get this nut tightened on here, and what this bolt does is it spreads that, that puller in there. Yeah, one thread is a little messed up on this thing. I'll just call it a bit of an employee issue, and we'll let it go at that. Okay. Now I can feel that tighten up there. You don't have to over-tighten it. You just have to spread that tool so it's got a grab, so it grabs real well on that uh, on that bearing. Okay, so now we're going to need a big wrench, and we're going to need this wrench, and we'll put it right here. And what we're going to do is, let's see. Yeah, that wrench goes on those flats. I didn't mention that. I think you showed it with the camera. Thank you, Mike. And we're going to pull that. And I can actually feel that bearing coming out of there. This big wrench, of course, is uh, certainly strong enough to do it. Excuse me. Didn't mean to have you get in my way. <laughs> And this bearing will be out in about a minute here. Okay. Come on. Come on. And my buddy Rich is going to have a nice new 19-inch wheel with polished stainless spokes on the front of his shovel head. You've already seen me do laced wheels or lace wheels before. So I won't be showing that. What I really wanted to show here was this bearing remove and replace. And there it is, so to speak. <clears throat> There's the bearing. You can see where the tool went through the bearing and grabbed it. Okay. Now I'm going to 
take the tool off of this thing. And let's see, that was an 11 16 on this nut. And we'll take this spreader bolt out of here. <clears throat> And there it is. And now we have a perfectly removed bearing. Okay, there is the tool which we won't be using this again today. There is the bearing that just came out. And we can put all of these things. Um, a lot of this stuff that's in the box is actually for other size bearings is all. It's all the same setup for this same kind of wheels. So if I look in there and check it out real nice, it's very nice in there. It's all nice and clean. I honestly did not remove and uh, remove these earlier. So I don't think I need any work on this surface at all. If I did, I would probably clean it up with a little scotch bright or something of that nature. But it's all nice and clean. Now they tell you um, in the instructions, I don't remember if it was in the service manual or with the tool, but they tell you to install the left bearing first. So we're going to install the left bearing first. Okay, which side is the left side? Well, I looked in my service manual. This is late model stuff. I got to look it all up. And there is one side is wider than the other. Now, all of these things I'm saying are only true of this specific type of hub. So if you ask me a question on an earlier or later hub that pertains to this hub, I may not have the answer. So if you write in with any questions, be sure and tell me what the hub is or what the bike is. By that, I mean year and model. Please don't just say it's a shovel head. There's many kinds of shovel heads. Okay, so the left side is the narrow side. So we're going to put a nice new bearing in the narrow side. And we have a nice new bearing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put anti-seize all over it, which is what the service manual calls for. Now, the lettering on this should go to the outside, which is kind of interesting because there's lettering on both sides of it, so I think they're both the same. I looked them over real good. I wasn't sure of all the part numbers and confusion that I'm having here, so what I did was I took my micrometers and I measured this bearing and made sure it was the right bearing. You know, when Harley makes something new and the aftermarket companies supply parts for it, sometimes there's a lot of confusion until it all settles down a bit. Okay, there it is. And it's lovely. So now we're going to take the tool that looks like this. Now this is for one with a one inch bearing. I didn't mention that. I mentioned, you know, that these are all different. There are ones with the one inch axle and three quarter inch axle is the other size. This is the one for the three quarter inch axle. 
this is for the one inch which is what we're dealing with and it just goes like that now I want to make sure it's going in straight okay now let's see as I recall we're going to put this here You know, I'm wondering if I forgot anything here. I may have. Seems to me No, I did fine. I did fine. Let's see, what is that? Okay going to put that in there that in there that sounds pretty uh, complete put a washer on there we're going to put a bearing on there we're going to put another washer on there we're going to put a nut on there sometimes you feel like a nut sometimes you don't Let's see, what do we have, a three-quarter here? I think that looks like a three-quarter. It is a three-quarter. And what I neglected to do was get a socket for this ratchet. Excuse me? Mike, you want to show some close-ups on that while I go get a, a nice deep socket? And I'm back with a socket. Okay. So now, I've got a socket holding this here. And I've got a wrench right here. It's kind of funny they tell you to... Uh, lock the uh, the wheel in something I don't like this it's not starting straight and if it's not going to start straight I'm going to find out why it's only off a little bit but you know what can't chance it that has to go in straight Not happy with that. You know what I'm going to... No, I don't think my vice would take it. Let's see. I think that got it. Just a little bit right. There. There we go. this back in here and we're going to put this on here and the nut is right where'd that nut go <laughs> well now There it is now. Maybe next time I'll uh, 
lace the wheel before I uh, attempt this. A little hard to hang onto the wheel and get everything as straight as I'd like it. But I think I think what I'm going to do is put this in the vise. There we go. There we go. Now we're cooking. I think we got it pretty straight. Not straight yet. Let's see. That's pretty good. That's even better. Now it feels like it's going together. Looks very good. That looks fine. Looks fine. Your eyes can play tricks on you with stuff like this too. I really didn't think it was going to be that hard to pull in there. The last ones I did were not. Well, that's it. It's going. I think to put the other bearing in, I'm going to use a longer handled ratchet and a half inch drive instead of my three ace. It's fine. Let's get a little bit lower there. There we go. A little bit lower. Okay, I just felt that bearing slide into place. There it is. Well, that's it. Okay, now that we've done that, we can take it out. Just going to be pretty easy here. Now I did, since I had already taken one bearing out, I did take the spacer out and wash it so it's nice and clean. This is a spacer that goes between the bearings. So all we need to do is put this spacer back in here, which should be uh, pretty quick and easy. There it is, and it goes all the way in there, 
and then the bearing goes against it, and we get it, we get our preload that way. So there it is. I don't think I'm going to put the other bearing in. I think that was enough of a demonstration. I will put the other bearing in there tonight and get this thing ready to lace a new wheel to. So I hope uh, everybody enjoyed looking at that. I hope I wasn't too much of a clown on it because it's late model stuff. I don't do a lot of that. So until next time, I'll see you out on the road.